home of the high school football Big 22 Award, and the best overall sports coverage in the Valley. This is the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week, sponsored by Stadium GM and She Leaves. From Spartan Stadium in Boardman, Ohio, it is week number nine. Tonight, the Boardman Spartans and the Austin Town Fitch Falcons do battle as the playoff push continues. Hi again, everybody. Chad Krasminski alongside Ralph Sandy. It certainly feels like football weather here in week nine. Two weeks from tonight, we will be starting the postseason. These two teams jockeying for some better playoff positioning, Ralph. Absolutely. If it started today, they'd both be in, but obviously they want to improve their stature and they want to try to get a home game. So a win here tonight would do that. Fitch won the toss and elected to defer to the second half. And so Josiah Bernai... We'll tee the football up. It'll be Hightower and Cam Thompson back deep to return for Mordman. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this rivalry affair on high school football's biggest stage. Should be a lot of fun here on homecoming night. Bernay drills this one. Downfield, it's picked up and taken across the 10. Out to the 15-yard line and the 20, 25, and out to the 28-yard line comes Cam Thompson. And the Boardman Spartans will come out. It is a first down and 10. Our keys to the game are brought to you by Wendy Perez of Berkshire Hathaway. She has the keys to your new home and tonight's game. Ralph? Yeah, I think for Fitch, it's all about stopping the run. The goal is to take away Sean O'Hara in the run game and force Boardman to throw the ball. On the other side, for Boardman, take away pre-snaps read. Devin Sherwood is like another coach out of the field. For Boardman, it's going to be important not to show their defensive cards too early. And finally, settle in. Big game, big environment, homecoming. Stick to the game plan. First down and 10. The Boardman quarterback is Terrence Thomas wearing a different number tonight. He dumps it off. Cam Thompson has it and he's knocked out of bounds across the 40 and up near the 44 yard line. Cam Thompson a trusty target and another one of those prime recruits getting it done on first down. You know they rely so much on Sean O'Hara in the backfield. Another way to extend that run game is those easy screen passes, those swing passes and you see some success right there on first down. Terrence Thomas gives over the right side. It is O'Horo, who comes in with 883 rushing yards. C.J. Chisler there to make the stop. O'Horo very active in Boardman's loss to Harding that we saw a few weeks ago. Yeah, I think we'll be saying both of those names a lot tonight. Sean O'Horo expected to get a lot of carries. And on the other side of the ball, C.J. Chisler, their leading tackler coming into this ballgame. Second down and seven. This is Thomas looking to throw. He fires towards that far sideline. It is incomplete. Pass was intended for Andre Freeman. And that's something they're going to need to do tonight to be successful, Chad. They're going to have to establish that pass game a little bit. You know, we talked about our keys to the game is to take away that run game. So Borman is going to have to be successful. And it doesn't have to be long bombs down the field. But those intermediate routes are going to have to be successful to have a chance in this ball game. Some changes up front for Boardman, thanks to some players being all banged up. Terrence Thomas keeps it himself. He's cut down at the 49-yard line. It's a pickup of two yards. That'll bring up a fourth down play. Again, C.J. Schisler there to make the stop for the Falcons. And that Boardman offense still out there on fourth down. A young defense for Austin Town Fitch. Cam Smith is a playmaker in the defensive backfield. Devin Sherwood dangerous always. Fourth down and four. And Terrence Thomas has one back in the backfield. It is Sean O'Horo. Four wide receivers set for the Spartans. Who appear like they will go. Seth Antrim rolling the dice. Terrence Thomas looks to throw. Flush to the near side. There's a flag. And Thomas is... Pushed out of bounds. He spun. A late flag came in again. You'd think the first flag was a hold. For this sure. one may be a face mask, perhaps. We'll see. It may even be a late hit there on the sidelines. It didn't seem like a lot. But there was a lot of Fitch players, Borman players, in that Borman sidelines. And you'd think we might be doing this one again. Our referee is Kurt Benner. Oldie on the offense. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Those penalties will offset. 
Replay, fourth down. So another chance. We're going to look at the late situation here. It was, wasn't much of a face mask if there was. Had hold of that jersey. But the game plan changes a little bit on fourth down again. So now the Spartans look like they will send out the punt team. And that is Cam Thompson set to punt. And Thompson gets away, a wobbly kick, angled towards the near sideline and out of bounds. And it'll be first down and 10 for an explosive Austin Town Fitch offensive unit. WKBN Sports Team 27 has you covered 24 hours a day with in-depth coverage at WKBN.com and the WKBN mobile app. There you'll find the latest high school scores, power rankings, feature stories, highlights, and a whole lot more. Do yourself a favor, download the WKBN mobile app today. Chad Krasminski, Ralph Sandy with you first down in 10. As Austin Town Fitch, standout quarterback Devin Sherwood goes back to work with a four wide receiver set and Sherwood will give over the left side. It's up to the 29 yard line, Tyree Mitchell. When we saw Fitch back against Maslin several weeks ago, the Falcons didn't have any running backs available thanks to injury. Yeah, they were down three, had to play some of their wide receivers from that tailback position, but the, the common theme all year for them with their success is number two, Devin Sherwood, the quarterback. Second down and six following the pickup of four as you look at the offensive starters for Fitch. Mitchell switches from left to right next to Sherwood. And the give will be no give as Sherwood cutting the right side and Sherwood is dropped short of the 30-yard line. Not much running room whatsoever. Good push up front for Boardman on the defensive side. Yeah, usually these are the plays we see Sherwood get to the outside. You see he breaks that first tackle, and he ends up turning that corner, turning it up for 10 or 15 yards. A nice job defensively maintaining contain on the outside. Sean O'Hora coming up there with the tackle. Third down and seven from the 28-yard line. Devin Sherwood. Three wide receivers, near side to the left, Sherwood to throw, flush, he will tuck it and run, 30, cuts it back inside, and that second effort has him to the 35, and it looks like he is going to have a first down for the Falcons. Well, and that's why he's one of my uh, favorite players to watch this season. I mean, he could turn a broken play, obviously a pass play, looking downfield, really nothing there. You see him directing traffic a little bit, and he's able to turn a broken play into a 10-yard first down. Devin Sherwood comes in with 583 rushing yards, averaging just under seven yards per crack. Nine rushing touchdowns for Sherwood. Who sets up first down and 10 from the 35. Sherwood fakes the run, and he's dropped at the 29-yard line, blasting his way into the backfield, Fernando Ortiz. Well, you like the aggressive style of the Spartan defense that time. And then descending Ortiz, really coming from his defensive end spot, pretty much untouched, untouched, and getting the sack. And you know that's the game plan: get as many hits on Sherwood as you can. And for Ortiz, that is his fifth sack of the season. As you take a look at those defensive front liners for Boardman. Second down and 16. Sherwood dumps it off. It's complete to the 30, 35, 40, 45. Outside 45, 50. Foot race on down to the 40. Inside the 40, down to the 38-yard line. Sure looked like a late hit by Anthony Hightower. And that's D.J. Williams, and it's a sight for sore eyes having him back for Fitch. Well, D.J. Williams so impressive in that Ursuline game until he got banged up at the end. And... You, know, you always tell your running backs or receivers, don't take negative yards, don't run backwards, as you see more running backwards here, but he catches some blocks on the outside. And there you can see why you saw some moaning and groaning there from the from the Austin Town fans. First down and 10 from the 37-yard line. Falcons on the move. Early on, no score. 7.23 left to play in the quarter. We have a whistle and a timeout taken by Fitch. We'll take a timeout and bring you back after this in the WKBM High School Football. Give
of the week. See the bold and spacious 2021 Chevy Trailblazer at Stadium GM in Salem. Right now, we have the absolute best selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs at the Stadium Pre-Owned Superstore. Our lot is stocked with all makes and models of the pickup trucks you're looking for. And if you want an SUV, we've got a Terrain, Trax, Equinox, or Encore at the lowest prices anywhere. If you want to shop online, log on to StadiumGM.com to see our great selection and even fill out your credit app. And don't forget, we will buy your lease car and you can make thousands from it. All at the store that always gives you more. The Stadium GM Pre-Owned Superstore in Salem. Abisher's Jewelry has been serving the Valley for over 90 years. Our passion for fine diamonds and gemstones has not wavered since my great-grandfather started our business in 1928. Our desire has been and always will be to uphold our family tradition of excellence in both the quality of our pieces and service. Abisher's Jewelry, trusted jewelers since 1928. Mouthwatering burgers, tasty wings, and classic American pub style food can be enjoyed at Sam's Wedge Inn, Austin Town's local bar and grill. Fun, casual dining in a great atmosphere with great people. Catch all your favorite teams on their big screen TVs. Sam's full size bar features a large selection of your favorite specialty drinks, wine, and craft beer, along with daily drink and food specials. Bring your family and friends for the food and fun at Sam's Wedge Inn, corner of Raccoon and New Road in Austin Town. From feed to fences and everything in between. For all your farm and garden needs, visit Millstone Farm and Garden Center or MillstoneFG.com. Austin Town Fitch and Boardman scoreless here. Early on, first possession for the Fitch Falcons, coached by TJ Parker. Devin Sherwood. Awaits the snap, three wide receivers set. Sherwood keeps it himself up the middle. Sherwood puts his head down and barrels his way down near the 32-yard line. And it's a pickup of about five for the Falcons. Yeah, if it wasn't for his own player, Ethan Short here, you can see him run into the back of his, his fullback. He might have had a bigger gain. But that dual-thread quarterback, so popular at every level of football, Devin Sherwood surely could do with his arm and his legs. Second down and five. Again, the running back is D.J. Williams. Sherwood brings a man in motion right to left. He takes the snap. He will give to Williams. Williams around the left side has it to the 25. And he's pushed down inside the 25 at the 23-yard line. A ground attack for Fitch looking impressive here in the early going. Yeah, D.J. Williams, 5'10", 200-pound sophomore, really has a nice balance of, uh, of that power aspect and the speed. And like we said, we saw him get going a little bit against Ursuline. Something to keep an eye on there, the ball coming out at the end of that. Looks like Tyree Mitchell has checked back into the backfield. Donnie Ellis split as a wide receiver, near side to the left. A trio of Falcons, far side to the right. Tyree Mitchell to the right of Devin Sherwood will take the handoff. Mitchell up the middle as a flag comes in from the near side. And you would imagine it's going to be a hold, a call against Fitch. Holding on the offense, number 76. Yards, 76 is Jack Knight for Fitch. At this stage of the season, these two teams banged up, but then again, so too is every other team across the country, really. Well, absolutely. You know, heading into week eight, Fitch, it seems, is getting a little bit healthier at this point, getting at least their running backs back. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it's beat up, and that's where the depth comes into to play. And you look at both of these sidelines, a lot of kids on these teams, and some of these young guys are going to have to step up. First and 22 from the 35-yard line. They will dump it off right side, Williams. And Williams puts his head down. He's spun down at the 31-yard line. It's a pickup of just four yards. The 
quick pass to Williams on the outside. Again, you have to keep this defense on as you can't have Boardman stacking the box against this run game, whether it's Sherwood, Williams, Mitchell, doesn't matter. You have to test the perimeter every now and then to, you know, to keep things loose there in the middle. Second down and 18. Inside of five minutes left in the opening quarter, no score. And a big-time Division II battle with plenty of playoff implications. Boardman and Fitch. Dan Evans is late getting into the ball game. He now is lined up far side to the right. Second down and 18. In motion comes Tyler Evans. Here's Sherwood to throw. Let's it rip. Downfield! And it is a terrific catch by Cam Smith. He got decked, knocked out of bounds, but he held on. And it is a Fitch first down, and the Falcons all of a sudden have reached the BNR wholesale tire and wheel red zone. Yeah, and Devin Sherwood knows that they're pressure. He could feel that pressure coming from his left and really puts a nice ball out there for Cam Smith, who does a good job of hanging on to it because, like you said, he got hit just about the same time that ball got there. First end goal from the seven-yard line for Austin Town Fitch knocking on the door. Illegal substitution. Offense. Five yards. First down. All the little errors, all the little mistakes that can haunt you in a game like this. And all of a sudden, it's first and goal from the 12. They were able to recover from that holding penalty to get themselves in a position to pick up that first down. Now you have the rare first and 12. DJ Williams in the backfield behind Devin Sherwood. And Sherwood will give it to Williams. Williams muscles his way, still on his feet, back inside the 10-yard line. And wrestled down at the 8. And it'll be second down and goal. Well, it's nice that you have enough trust in your run game that first and goal from the 12, you're able to hand that ball off and still pick up a good chunk of yards. Looks like he gets four or five on that first down carry. Tyree Mitchell now checks into the backfield. A three wide receiver set in motion comes Ethan Short. Devin Sherwood on second and goal gives to Mitchell. Mitchell trying to find an opening, keeping the legs churning. Back in his way inside the five-yard line. He's scratching and clawing for extra yardage. It'll be third down and goal for the Fitch Falcons. And I think that's the wrinkle that we haven't seen from Fitch this year. Bringing in number 40 to be that fullback, that H-box, that H-back to, to block for these running backs. A little bit of change from what we've seen, and I think that certainly adds to the success of this run game. Third down and goal from the three-yard line. Three minutes left to play in the opening quarter. Tyree Mitchell in the backfield behind Sherwood. Sherwood gives to Tyree Mitchell. Mitchell puts his head down, and Mitchell is stuffed. Short of the end zone, and it's decision time for T.J. Parker. And what do you do here? Well, I mean... Uh, we know they have a good kicker. Josiah Bernai, one of the best kickers we've seen all season. So you know you're in gimme range for your kicker. But you also know that, hey, it's, it's week eight. Do you take a risk? And I think Coach Parker is going to. So the offense will stay out for Austin Town Fitch. What a shot in the arm it would be for the Boardman defense if they could come up with a stop. In the backfield, it is D.J. Williams. Sherwood with a three wide receiver set. Sherwood turns, gives Williams up the middle, trying to push his way, and he stopped short of the end zone. What a stop by Isaiah Torres. No score. Spartans have it after this on the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. Len Rome and Jim Boboy, 33 WYTV News Daybreak. I'm Wendy Perez. As you're aware, the real estate market is pretty hot. Housing inventory and interest rates are still low. Let's take advantage of this opportunity today. Call Wendy Perez, a top 2% nationally ranked realtor. We make car 
are buying fun here at Fred Martin Ford. And I know it sounds hard to believe, but I promise you, it's unlike any dealership you've ever visited. No high pressure, no fancy foods, just a friendly, fun-like atmosphere. And we're committed to giving you the best deal possible on your next vehicle. With all the cars we sell, we can afford to sell for less. And Nikki is the pro at getting folks approved. If you're already a customer, thank you. If not, come see what you're missing. At Fred Martin Ford, we sell for less, a, a lot, lot less. less. A shopping trip up and down 224. Why does it always feel so slow? Like the seasons change. And that's a look at today's weather. Skip the crazy traffic. Find everything you want in one place. Get it here. Get it now at the Eastwood Mall. Dr. Brock Hall, D.C., in Boardman, would like to wish both teams good luck in tonight's game. Now accepting new patients. Call today to schedule an appointment. I'm Wendy Perez. It's not just another home. It's your home. When it's time to buy or sell, your goals are my goals. Call Wendy Perez, a top 2% nationally ranked realtor. Boardman defense coming up big. The big stop of D.J. Williams on fourth down and goal. Plenty of Spartans to the football. And it's a turnover on downs. It'll be first and ten for Boardman at the Spartan three-yard line. Spartans will give it up the middle. And it's up ahead to the five, maybe the six-yard line. Just trying to get a little extra room to work. Sean O'Hara pushing his way up ahead to the six. It's a pickup of three, second and seven for Boardman. And I think O'Hara is the perfect type of back when you need three or four yards for that offense to work for uh, or to work with to give him the football to, to kind of pound up the middle. Terrence Thomas changed his number tonight. He's wearing 14 in case you're wondering who the new quarterback wearing 14 is. And Thomas spun backwards, swarmed upon, and they will say he is stopped at the one-yard line, perilously close to a safety. Absolutely looked like Cam Smith come up and grab that jersey of Terrence Thomas. You see Thomas kind of retreat right there to try to get an angle. But so many times we see almost safeties, we think they are, but certainly that's the right call right there. See Terrence Thomas getting back to that one-yard line. Terrence Thomas awaits the snap. Spartans will look towards the near sideline. Confirm the call. Sean O'Horo to the right of Thomas, who will keep it himself, and he is knocked down following a pickup of just two yards. And so... The Boardman punt team will have to come out, and Fitch is going to get some great field position here. Not an easy place to operate offensively, Ralph. No, absolutely. They did a really nice job. Obviously, you go for it on the fourth down. You don't get it. You really put the pressure there on that defense to, to hold them, to not get a first down, to get a three and out so you, you get your offense back out there with good field position. And that Fitch defense does exactly that. And the first quarter is in the books. We head to the second. Still no score in the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. See the next generation of the GMC Yukon at Stadium GM in Salem. Nightline Embroidery and Screen Print in Girard has been a proud sponsor of the Player of the Game for over 10 years. For all of your personalized school or business apparel, event and business signs and posters, they've got you covered. There's only one place to go. Nightline, West Liberty Street, Girard. We have a really good treatment plan ready for Patrick and we'll take great care of him. Children's.org/spine. Are you tired of your bank caring more about taking your money than about you? At ASECU, we're open to the community and proud to be one of the last locally owned and operated financial institutions in the Valley. Want to keep your money local and save hundreds on your home or auto loan? It's time to make the move to ASECU. 
where people, not profit, has always been our first priority. Stop in today and experience the credit union difference. ASECU, a service everyone can use. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Just because you come to the Valley STEM School does not mean you have to go into the STEM career field. That's the beauty of Valley STEM is that you really get to explore what it is that you want to do here. We get to know their personal interests. We integrate the personal interests into our lessons along with the lab equipment. This school has so much hands-on. It's so much better because I'm getting that help that I need, and I think that kids will have fun here. Attend our open house on November 23rd or call for a private tour today. Lightline Embroidery and Screen Print in Girard has been a proud sponsor of the Player of the Game for over 10 years. For all of your personalized school or business apparel, event and business signs and posters, they've got you covered. If there's only one place to go, Lightline, West Liberty Street, Girard. All set for the second quarter. No score between Boardman and Fitch. Spartans will punt. It's Fernando Ortiz set to kick it away. Tyler Evans back deep to return for Fitch, averaging 16 yards per return. We'll see if Fitch comes after this. Ortiz gets away. A decent kick. Evans makes the catch at the 44, and the Falcons will set up shop in Boardman territory. First down and 10. The area's best football players are all part of WKBN's Big 22, sponsored by ASECU and Ingram, Cassis, and Graham. Go to WKBN.com and click on sports to see the top high school football players from the Valley. Chad Krispinski, Ralph Sandy with you tonight. It's turned out to be a terrific night. There were some weather worries. At the moment, we're okay. Maybe not so much later. But for the moment, we're playing football, and that's all you can ask for at this point. Austin Town Fitch with the football. Devin Sherwood, first down and 10 from the Boardman 44-yard line. Sherwood looks to throw, lets it rip, and is caught by Evans, and he's ridden down at the 25-yard line. Tackle made by Cam Thompson, but Tyler Evans moves the chains. He's a big play waiting to happen every time he gets the football. And I think that's a luxury the Falcons have. You see Devin Sherwood, plenty of time to pass in the pocket there, nobody even around him. The Falcons have so many different weapons on offense. And, you know, we talked about how they were banged up earlier in the year. Getting healthy, their backs are back, their receivers are there. And a nice play there for a first down. Sherwood brings a man in motion. He will toss it. This is Dan Evans, and he is dropped as soon as he got his hands on the football. Cortland Love was there to make the tackle for Boardman. Cortland Love, of course, the brother of former Cardinal Mooney and Kentucky standout Courtney Love. Yeah, Courtney Love, I think one of the best players we've seen yep. over the years. His brother doing a nice job at a different position right there from the nose tackle position. No gain, second down and 10 from the 25-yard line. Devin Sherwood will turn and give to Williams. Williams to the outside, he's to the 20. Williams to the 15, 10, and he's cut down. Big, strong running for the big guy, DJ Williams. And it's a pickup of 14 and a first down, and Austin Town Fitch has reached the BNR Wholesale Tire and Wheel Red Zone. Well, you love the fact that he took that up the middle, did a little jump cut to the outside. Really, all the defenders come to that middle of that line thinking he's going to run it up the middle and find some space there on that right side. Williams remains in the backfield. He now motions out. They dump it off to Williams. Williams bounces off one tackler, puts his head down, and he is dropped. And he lost a yard or so on the play as Boardman sniffed it out immediately. Yeah, Cam Thompson comes up. He's going to feel all 200 pounds of DJ Williams right there. And folks, keep in mind, that's a big guy, DJ Williams, and he is just a sophomore. He's another one of those young Fitch players that has a heck of a future. It is second down and 11. Sherwood to throw, firing. It is caught down at the five-yard line. Dominic Perry made the catch. He continued to try to push his way for a little bit extra. And it's going to bring up a third down situation. We'll see where they give him progress to. 
Dominic Perry just running the slant there. Catching that right in front of the safety, taking a pretty big hit, but Perry's another one of those guys. Doesn't start, but sure-handed receiver able to bring in off the sidelines. Third down and three from the four-yard line. Tyree Mitchell is checked back in for Fitch. Sherwood gives to Tyree Mitchell. Mitchell muscling his way. Touchdown! Four-yard touchdown run by Tyree Mitchell. His third rushing touchdown of this season, and Austin Town Fitch draws first blood. You know, we talk about the running back group getting healthy. You watch Tyree Mitchell score that touchdown. You could see his right hand is basically a club. So you have your running back playing with his left hand, and that left hand gets him right into the end zone. Josoy Aperni on to attempt the extra point. Snap is back, ball is down, kick is up, and it is good. 8.52 to play here, the first half, pitch seven, Boardman nothing. On the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. Check out the 2021 Chevy Blazer at Stadium GM in Salem. Right now, we have the absolute best selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs at the Stadium Pre-Owned Superstore. Our lot is stocked with all makes and models of the pickup trucks you're looking for. And if you want an SUV, we've got a Terrain, Trax, Equinox, or Encore at the lowest prices anywhere. If you want to shop online, log on to StadiumGM.com to see our great selection and even fill out your credit app. And don't forget, we will buy your lease car and you can make thousands from it. All at the store that always gives you more. The Stadium GM Pre-Owned Superstore in Salem. At Bios Wellness Urgent Care in Youngstown, we offer more than you would expect from an urgent care center. We provide physical health care, sports and pre-employment physicals, and all your back-to-school wellness needs, as well as treating urgent mental health and substance abuse issues. Our registration is almost completely contactless with online scheduling, forms, co-pays, and much more. Walk-ins are always welcome, even for rapid and antibody COVID-19 testing. Fast and friendly service for all of your health needs. Visit Bios Wellness Urgent Care. It's Boscow's grand opening celebration at the Eastwood Mall. See Elvis Aaron Presley Jr. perform daily at 2 and 7 p.m. Shop designers casual brands for Missy's now 30 to 56% off. Men's college fleece hoods just $24.99. 60% off our entire stock of holiday dinnerware and giftware from Lennox, Faultsgraf, and more. And join us Saturday, October 16th for autographs and a panel discussion with Ron Jaworski and other football legends at the brand new Boscow's Eastwood Mall. Good luck to both teams in tonight's game from Valley Industrial Trucks. Valley Industrial Trucks, your professional full-service material handling corporation. Eight minutes, 52 seconds to play here in the first half. Austin Town Fitch with a 7-0 lead over Boardman here in week number nine of the high school football season. Chad Krispinski, Ralph Sandy with you. Fitch was held on a fourth and goal situation previously in the first half, but... The Falcons used a nice mix of run and pass, and they punched it in. Yeah, they did a nice job with he, on that touchdown play. I thought he might have been down at the one, but it brought up an interesting fourth down play again. But fortunately for them, they got the touchdown, and I think it's important here that Boardman try to respond. Josiah Bernay set to kick it away for Fitch. High Tower and Thompson deep for Boardman. And this is Cam Thompson. Up across the 15, races across the field to the 20. Thompson tries to cut it back upfield, back to the inside, and he's pushed backwards and knocked down. And it looks like they may give him forward progress to the 25-yard line. And there to make the tackle to Sean Vaughn, Jr. Let's take a look at how things materialize, that nice mixture of pass and run. Fitch getting it done in both areas, Ralph. Yeah, and I think you see a lot of different receivers getting involved. There you see Perry, the previous play. You saw Tyler Evans. And then again, you have the two-headed monster here in the backfield tonight. And that's Tyree Mitchell getting it into the end zone. So first and 10, they mark it at the 25-yard line. Terrence Thomas and company, of course, Thomas, verbally committed to play college football in the Big Ten at Purdue. And Thomas will give it over the right side, strong running up to the 28-yard line. Then a wall of Falcon defenders were there. That's Fernando Ortiz on the carry for Boardman. 
Ortiz comes in with 136 rushing yards and five touchdowns. Yeah, both of those Spartan running backs, big bodied guys in Ohoro and Ortiz. Pick up a four, second down and six. Thomas, again to the ground, into the open field, 40, stutter step, move to the 45, Ohoro to the 48-yard line and a Boardman first down. Yeah, and that's the Sean Ohoro we saw against Harding. You know, his ability to run between the tackles, get through that first wave of defense, and once he gets through those linebackers and those defensive backs, be able to use his power and speed to, to make it a bigger play. First down and 10 from the 48-yard line. Terrence Thomas brings the man in motion left to right. And now Thomas will give. This is Ortiz for a yard to the 49. Dan Evans there to make the tackle for Fitch. It's a pickup of one. Boy, oh, and that's a big tackle right there by Dan Evans. You know, Ortiz trying to get to the outside. I think he would have had some real estate out in front of him. Seven minutes left in the first half. This is Ohoro now in the backfield. Ortiz comes in motion. And they will give it to Ohoro, who puts his head down. And he reaches the 49 of Fitch, but no further than that. And it'll bring up a third down situation. You know, we saw Borman come out on their first drive of the game and throw the ball two or three times, I believe. And well, since then, they've stuck to the ground game. This is a fast-moving first half as the clock continues to roll. When we get back to it, it'll be third and seven for Boardman, just about halfway home in this second quarter. Hightower and Thompson wide out to the right. Couple of backs in the backfield. This is Terrence Thomas. Fakes the handoff. He looks to throw. Firing deep downfield. Thompson can't make the catch on a couple of steps. Not sure if he got crossed up or turned the wrong way. It looked like it would be a touchdown, but it was not to be. Wow. Yeah, I don't think Cam Thompson saw that football. Terrence Thomas got some pressure in his face right toward the end of that. He throws it out there. And it's hard to tell if he, he if he lost sight of that football or didn't have it at all. But a fourth down here. Thompson, another one of those explosive skill players for Boardman. And he almost had a touchdown there. Instead, Boardman will have to punt it away, and it will be Thompson to kick. And he angles this one. It will hit and roll. It'll be muffed by Evans. Evans brings it out of the end zone. He better hurry. And Evans is dropped. And they will say it is at the one-yard line. That was so, so close. He probably would have been better off letting it roll into the end zone. I think the thinking there that time, Chad, was he touched the football right there at yep. about the three-yard line. I think in his mind he couldn't kneel on it, which he could. So I think in his mind he thought he had to bring that back out. And fortunately for him and the Falcons, he at least gets Going it to on the, the field, one. The runner gained possession inside the field of play. First down, Austin down at the one. And so now a prime opportunity for that Boardman defensive unit to what they will hope will be a big time stop. When I, I think back to that Maslin game in a very similar situation, it was Devin Sherwood that was able to get him out of this mess with his feet. DJ Williams in the backfield, Devin Sherwood and the Fitch Falcons backed up at their own one yard line. And a timeout has been called by Devin Sherwood. We'll take a timeout as well. Timeout. Seven nothing on the WKBN High School Football. Second start. Aaron Dean, weeknights on 33 WYTV News.
The Love It For Less sale ends soon at Ashley Home Store. Don't miss your chance to get up to 25% off. Plus, get 60 months special financing with no money down. Hurry, the Love It For Less sale is ending soon. Ashley Home Store in Boardman, Ohio, next to Chick-fil-A. Millstone Farm and Garden Center, just a mile north of Columbiana, is family-owned and can handle all your farm and garden needs. Keep your fine-feathered friends happy this winter with our selection of bird feed and feeders. Pick up feed for your livestock or food for your pets. We've got toys and treats, too. Check out our Green Mountain Grills with flavored pellets. Ask about our drive through and call-ahead orders. Handling all of your farm and garden needs, Millstone Farm and Garden Center. Visit MillstoneFG.com today. Now is the best time to upgrade your vehicle at FlynnAutoGroup.com. Northeastern Ohio's largest auto group is your easiest way to shop for a new car, truck, or SUV. For over 40 years, Flynn Auto Group has been there to help you drive off in a new vehicle for little or no money down. Find Chevrolet, Buick, Cadillac, GMC, Ford, Lincoln, and Honda all in one spot. Whether you need a new car, service, or body work, all of your automotive needs can be found at FlynnAutoGroup.com. Dr. Brock Hall, D.C., in Boardman, would like to wish both teams good luck in tonight's game. Now accepting new patients. Call today to schedule an appointment. The Love It For Less sale ends soon at Ashley Home Store. Don't miss your chance to get up to 25% off. Plus, get 60 months special financing with no money down. Hurry, the Love It For Less sale is ending soon. Ashley Home Store in Boardman, Ohio, next to Chick-fil-A. Five minutes, 42 seconds left to play. It is first down and 10 for Fitz from the one-yard line. Devin Sherwood puts his head down, just trying to get a little bit of space with which to operate. On the keeper, he barrels ahead for very little. Well, I love that initial shot down from the goal line. You saw how close they were. You'll be able to see the replay from that same camera angle and just see how tight it is. We'll call it a gain of one. Second down and nine. From the two-yard line, rolling second quarter clock. Sherwood will operate out of the pistol. And Sherwood again will run the ball up the middle. This is Williams. Williams up ahead, blasting his way to the 15. Four pitch first down. Exactly what the Falcons needed. And limping off is DJ Williams. Well, what a nice hole there, right in the middle of that line. Chris King doing a great job of sealing off. See a pretty good hit taken there by DJ Williams, but a great run to, to get out of that end zone area and get you a fresh set of downs. First down and 10 from the 15-yard line. Three wide receivers near side to the right, one far side to the left. Devin Sherwood will bring a man in motion. It's Evans. Sherwood to throw. Firing downfield. Incomplete. Pass was intended for Donnie Ellis. It wasn't close. And it'll be second down and 10 upcoming. You know, one of the things we haven't seen a lot tonight is Devin Sherwood use his legs. You know, usually in the games that we've done in the past, he's he's up there as far as carries, is, and, you know, with the running backs, but has done the damage there through the, through the air tonight. There you see his numbers. That was his first incomplete pass of the evening. So the clock is stopped with 419 left, second down and 10 for Fitch from the Falcon 15-yard line. Tyree Mitchell is in. D.J. Williams limped off earlier. And the give is to Tyree Mitchell. All kinds of running room, and he is knocked down at the 24-yard line. But it still is a pickup of nine yards, setting up a very third and manageable third and one. Again, that Austin Town offensive line really starting to kind of dictate the pressure up front, dictate the flow of this game. When you start seeing safeties making tackles on running backs, you know that offensive line is doing a good job, and that same offensive line jumped right there. False start. Offense number 71. Five yards. Still third down. That's Jacob Jones. He jumped prematurely, and so all of a sudden that third and manageable becomes a bit more difficult, third and six. And again, field position big right here. Obviously, Borman wanted to get a stop right here, knowing that with three timeouts and pretty good field position, they might be able to do something before the half. 
Three wide receivers, far side to the left, one near side to the right. Sherwood operating with Tyree Mitchell. That's Williams now motioning out. Sherwood to throw, firing in, is caught for a first down! Ahead of the 40, and the 45, and the 47-yard line. Tyler Evans makes the catch and keeps the drive alive for Fitch. Well, what a nice play. You know, they've, sw they've thrown that swing pass to DJ Williams over and over. They get that same motion before that. And then they come back to the middle of the field. Really nice play call and execution. First down and 10. They spot the ball just shy of the 48-yard line. Or are they going to move the football up just a bit? Everything is in working order now. 3.09 left in the second quarter in motion. Comes Evans. This is a run play to Sherwood. Sherwood cut down inside the 45, but he has another Fitch first down. And that's what I'm talking about, Chad. The damage that Devin Sherwood could do with his legs is a huge part of this offense. And it's something they really haven't had to use here in the early going. But on first down, you see the nice run by Sherwood. First down and 10 from the 42-yard line, and we have a whistle and a Fitch timeout taken. And they now have no timeouts remaining here. WKBN's Big 22 includes the five blocks of granite. It honors the top high school football linemen in the Valley. It's sponsored by the Moransky Companies and Coca's Pizza. Go to WKBN.com and click on sports to see the top high school football players in our valley. So we're down to 241 left to play here in the first half. What do you do if you're Fitch at this point? You have plenty of time. You can still mix it up. But the way they can put up the points, you like their chances to get them a field goal or a touchdown. I mean, you like to change. You still like to have a timeout there in your back pocket if things <laughs> get a little crazy towards the end of the second quarter. They've used them up. But I think you don't have to go outside of your regular your playbook out here. You know, at 241, you can still run and pass, keeping in mind the clock stops on first downs to reset the chain. So you have some mini timeouts built in there. Let's check out some scores from around the area. Garfield 14, Brookfield nothing. It's Camel with a 13-7 lead over Newton Falls. That's in the second quarter. Harding all over Cheney, 21-0 in the second. Champion and Crestview deadlocked at seven at last check in quarter number one. Struthers leading Girard and Grove City leading Hickory. First down and 10 from the 42 for Fitch. Devin Sherwood sends Williams out to the left. Sherwood fires far side. Wide open, caught at the 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Donnie Ellis. 42-yard touchdown pass. Sherwood on point, and the Falcons strike again. And again, on that same play, Chad, you're going to watch Devin Sherwood kind of fake over to that swing pass out to the left side, kind of draws everybody up. They've thrown it to DJ Williams two or three times, and what that allows the, the offense to do is to get behind the defense, and Donnie Ellis, even though he had to wait on that pass a little bit, there's nobody around. Eighth touchdown pass of the season for Devin Sherwood and the first touchdown catch for Donnie Ellis. Bernay on for the extra point. His kick is up and it is good. 2.33 left to play here in the first half. It is all of a sudden Austin Town fits 14 and Boardman nothing. You know, that's something we've seen all year from this Fitch offense, the ability to be a quick strike offense. They also have the ability to kind of, like their first touchdown, just get the clock going, moving the, down the field. You know, they could do it all when they're in stride. And again, you see the fake to the left with the pass, the pump fake, and then over the top to for the touchdown. Don Yellow scampers into the end zone. Devin Sherwood can certainly do it all for Austin Town Fitch. A record breaker for Austin Town Fitch. We talked about it ad nauseum at the top of the passing list for Fitch. And Coach Parker said, look, he deserves to be there. He puts the work in, great effort. He dives into what the other team is doing. Just a student of the game, and he pushes his teammates. Just a great leader. And you look back.
that 99-yard drive. And boy, he made it look easy getting out of harm's way. Let's take a look at how that last drive went down and Sherwood getting it done with the wheels, also with the arm. Pinpoint accuracy. Yeah, he really does a nice job of, of spreading out the football, you know, really doing everything. And he has been Mr. Everything for this football team. And, you know, this program will certainly miss him next year as he graduates. But, you know, talking to some of the folks around the area, their lower levels at Fitch are stacked. And, uh, you know, they expect to continue the success here. But he will be a hard one to replace, that's for sure. T.J. Parker has this program. The, the trajectory is pointing upwards in a big way. A young coach, an innovative coach. And he has this Fitch program. Hasn't gone exactly as the Falcons have wanted this season, but the future is very bright, to say the least. Bernay boots it downfield. This is Hightower. Hightower breaks one tackle, at least to the 25. Puts on a move to the outside of the 30 and up to the 34-yard line. Devin Pounds there to make the tackle for Fitch. Every week we pick a player of the game. It's one player that has made the greatest impact during our WKBN Game of the Week. That is sponsored by Nightline Embroidery and Screen Printing. It will feature the player of the game every Monday night at 6 o'clock on WKBN 27 First News. Under the Friday night lights here in Boardman, week number nine. You know, you talked about with Fitch and even Boardman to a certain extent. The season hasn't gone like they had planned. But I think the thing with high school football, especially this year, 16 teams making the playoffs, all you got to do is get hot at the right time. You know, and I think, uh, you know, once you get to the dance, anything could happen. We have a whistle and a Boardman timeout taken. There was a little confusion, it looked like, as the Spartans were racing back on to the field out of the break. So we have a stoppage with 2.26 remaining. Well, I'm sure that wasn't the plan, to use a timeout when the clock was stopped at, at 2.26 here in the second quarter. They'd love to have that in their pocket as they try to mount a drive here to, to get something going in the second quarter. Elsewhere in the area, some scores to pass along. Canfield Cardinals continue to cruise. They have a 14-0 lead in the second quarter over Howland. And it is South Range with a 6-3 lead in the second quarter over Lakeview. South Range, of course, a tremendous run through the first eight weeks, unbeaten. Everybody looking ahead to that big matchup with Hubbard coming up in week number 10. Here it's 14-0, Fitch leading Boardman. Fitch trying for a sixth straight win in the head-to-head -head series with Boardman. These two have been rivals for a long, long time. And the run play goes to Kim Thompson, and Thompson busting it to the outside. He is stacked up and pushed to the near sideline and out of bounds, and the clock will stop. Trying to get the ball in the hands of a playmaker. Yeah, and I think you have to, and I, saw, I, I think we saw them try to get creative a little bit here to get guys like Cam Thompson, Anthony Hightower, you know, you got to get the ball in their hands. It can't always be Rashawn O'Hora and Ortiz up the middle. So a good attempt, creative, and I think they're going to need a little more of that here in, in the second half. Second down and two from the 42. This one dumped off to Hightower, who puts on a move. He has a first down, cutting and back and bobbing and weaving his way. It is a Boardman first down. I'm trying to see if I saw a flag thrown in at the tail end of the play. I don't think that's the case. It's not. And it's a Boardman first down. Good catch and run by Hightower. Yeah, Terrence Thompson just slinging it out there. It's exactly what it was, just a, a swing pass over there to the right. You know, he'd like to see Hightower get out of bounds towards the end of this, but he does able, he is able to get up and get that first down. Terrence Thomas rolling to the near side, floating downfield incomplete. Closest receiver there was Andre Freeman for Boardman, and it'll be second down and 10 for the Spartans. Terrence Thomas. Trying to get some points for Boardman here in the final 142. They love him here at Boardman. Just a great leader. 
team player. They call him a family guy, and they refer to him, interestingly enough, as the glue between everybody. Brings everybody together. Thomas gives. This is O'Hara and a shoe string tackle delivered by C.J. Schistler. Talked about Schistler a little bit in that first quarter. Their leading tackler, he really is all over this football field. Not the biggest of hit. Obviously, just getting a little bit of that foot, but it does the job. Third down and nine upcoming. Three wide receivers to the right, one near side to the left. Movement. And everybody's pointing at each other. And let's see. Ball start. Offense number 50. Five yards. Still third down. That's Kyle Barnett. Barnett, one of those new starters up front for the Spartans, moved a little early. And that third down and nine, which is already a hard conversion, becomes a little bit harder. Third down and 14. From the 42-yard line, empty backfield. Terrence Thomas looking to throw. He has time. Flushed from the pocket. Thomas will run. He's to the 45. He's to the 50. Puts his head down. Extra effort. Down to the 45-yard line. He's a short by about a yard. And it'll be fourth down and one. You, you have to go for it here inside the final minute. Let's see. Boardman quickly back to the line of scrimmage. And we have a Spartan timeout taken with 50 seconds left. Boardman has one timeout remaining. Yeah, probably a smart timeout there. You know, get to the sidelines, make sure you have a good play call instead of rushing into it. The last thing you want to do is give Devin Sherwood another opportunity from midfield to get his team into the end zone. We don't see Terrence Thomas run very often from that quarterback position. He does it here. And you know, he's an athlete for a reason. He's going to Purdue for a reason. And you can see him fighting and fighting to try to pick up those extra couple yards for that first down. And he gets it close enough for Coach Dantrum to, to try to go for it. Anytime you talk to somebody about this Boardman team and you ask coaches from around the area, what do you like about Boardman? They say, boy, they're blessed with such terrific skill. And Terrence Thomas is at the top of the list. He's just really special with the ball in his hands. Self-admittedly, I talked to him this week, and he said, look, I'm still getting comfortable making reads. I feel like I'm progressing well, but it is still a work in progress with him, you know, at quarterback. Yeah, and you wonder at the next level where he fits in. You know, he's played receiver, played receiver really well in the past. I imagine that's where he's going to end up. Fourth down and one from the 45-yard line. Terrence Thomas looking to throw. Flushed, steps up, and he's dropped. Brought down on the play by Austin Town. Fitch is Josh Fitzgerald. And it is a turnover on downs, and that Falcon defense all fired up. Yeah, that Falcon defense coming up big once again. Really nowhere for Terrence Thomas to go with this football. You know, he looks downfield, makes his reads, nothing there, tries to pick it up with his feet, but just too many Falcon defenders around him. And now, what could Devin Sherwood and this Falcon offense do? No timeouts in 44 seconds. Josh Fitzgerald with a huge stop with 44 ticks left. Devin Sherwood. Has thrown a touchdown pass, and now he has another opportunity. The other score coming on a Tyree Mitchell four-yard touchdown. Sherwood dumps it off to the left side. It is caught. Cam Smith puts on a move down to the 35-yard line, and it's a Fitch first down. Again, Fitch has no timeouts left, so they'll reset it and then crank the clock. Sherwood takes the snap, and he spikes it immediately to... Slow down that clock, which now reads 30 seconds. Keep in mind, they have Josiah Bernai, great kicker. If they get in position and can't get into the end zone. But again, it's going to be about clock management. You have a senior quarterback to, to try to control that. And Boardman will take its final timeout. 
you can't have any breakdowns on the defensive side in a situation like this. Remember, Fitch won the toss and deferred, so the Falcons will come out on offense to start. If Fitch is able to get some points on the board, then gets the ball and scores right from the get-go in the third, it's going to be awfully tough for Boardman to rally in this one. Watch for the Acura Boardman and Boardman Mitsubishi plays of the week. They come your way every Sunday night at 11 o'clock on WKBN 27. And as always, online at WKBN.com. So here's the situation. 30 seconds left in the first half. Fitch 14, Boardman nothing on homecoming here in week number nine in Boardman. And the chance for Fitch to increase its two touchdown lead. Falcons will work with an empty backfield. Devin Sherwood as a five wide receiver set from the 35 movement and Ellis sprinted down the far sideline. Five yards, second down. So it'll be second down and 15. From the 40-yard line, Fitch will operate with a two-touchdown lead. Devin Sherwood looks to the near side, dumps it up, and is caught by Cam Smith. Smith puts on a move, he's to the 25, and muscles his way towards the near sideline and out of bounds. And the clock will stop with 22 seconds left. It's a first down anyway. It would have stopped. And the Falcons have another opportunity from the 22. Boy, and watch the football IQ of Cam Smith at the end of this. Breaks the tackle. Watch him stretch the football out to the out-of-bounds line. Make sure there's no gray area there for the official. You get the ball out, and the offense is able to take a breath. They officially mark it at the 23. Again, a five-wide receiver set. Devin Sherwood with 22 seconds left. Fitch looking to strike. Sherwood fires end zone, and it is a big-time collision. Both players are going for the football, and they're going to say that it is Tyler Evans making the catch, I do believe. Yeah, we haven't hit, we haven't seen no the signal. signal yet. There it is, first and goal for Fitch. What a catch by Evans. Boy, really throws it up there, and Tyler Evans goes up and gets it. You see Borman's safety coming over. Trying to get a piece of it. Really looked like they caught it at the same, same time. time. Thomas Anduhar with a great effort for it. Fitch has reached the BNR wholesale tire and wheel red zone. In the backfield, it is DJ Williams from the three yard line, 14 seconds left. Devin Sherwood gives Williams muscles his way, and he is cut down short. Fitch in better hurry. Six seconds, now five. Sherwood will have to hurry to snap it. Sherwood takes the snap and spikes it. Clock has expired, and let's see if there's one second left on that clock or not. And that will do it. Wow. A prime opportunity for six for Fitch. And the clock has expired. We have reached halftime here in Boardman. Your halftime score, Austin Town Fitch 14, Boardman nothing. Our halftime coverage will begin when we come back. Chad Krispinski and Ralph Sandy inviting you to stay tuned for more on the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. Sheely's Furniture, Appliances, and Mattresses. The best things in life happen at home. If you haven't been to Sheely's lately, then you haven't been to Sheely's. Our newly remodeled mattress gallery offers a selection of over 50 beds from top manufacturers, including Sealy, Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic, Simmons, iComfort, White Dove, and more. Let us help you get your best night's sleep with our adjustable bases, pillows, mattress protectors, and more. At Sheely's, we offer a custom sleep solution with our body imaging technology. Plus, 24-month special financing. Sheely's, the best things in life happen at home. If it's a skilled trade, we probably teach it. We are the Newcastle School of Trades, and for 75 years, we have been your trade school. 
Begin your new career now. Visit yourtradeschool.com to learn more. Inner Circle Pizza Canfield. Come see why it's much, much more than a pizzeria. The 42-seat granite bar and eight HD TVs make this the best seat in the house to watch your favorite sporting events. The casual setting is perfect for family meals and get-togethers. Enjoy all the original icy favorites plus specialty pizzas, sandwiches, salads, and daily specials. Dine in or carry out. Inner Circle Pizza Canfield, where food and fun are endless. Ironwood Boulevard, across from the Hampton Inn. If you are a car buff, you need to visit TP Tools in Canfield. For over 40 years, we've been specializing in automotive restoration tools and auto body supplies. From paints and primers to our famous Made in USA scat blast sandblasting cabinets and high quality air compressors, we have the tools you need. Over 1,000 USA made products in stock on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Be sure to stop by our antique car museum. Over 50 cars on display. TP Tools and Equipment on Route 446 in Canfield. And welcome back to Spartan Stadium. We're here at halftime. It is Austin Town Fitch, 14, and Boardman, nothing. A thrilling end to that second quarter. We'll get to that in just a bit. Hi again, everybody. Chad Krispinski, Ralph Sandy with you. Let's revisit our keys to the game, which are brought to you by Wendy Perez of Berkshire Hathaway. She has the keys to your new home and tonight's game. Ralph? Yeah, coming into the game, we thought Fitch needed to stop the run, and I think they've been successful here in the first half, holding Boardman to 58 yards on the ground. On the other side, Boardman wanted to take away those pre-snap reads for Devin Sherwood. Average on that, Sherwood had a big first half, and for both of them settling in, and I think uh, in the early going, Fitch definitely got settled early, you know, went back and forth, especially with that big fourth down stop, but Fitch with the upper hand here at halftime. Falcons with a 14-0 lead here in week nine as these two continue to jockey positioning for postseason play, which will begin in earnest two weeks from tonight. Throughout the course of the season, we release our WKBN power rankings, the top 10 teams in the area based on that stage of the season. Without further ado, let's turn it over to sports director Ryan Allison. It is week eight of the high school football season, and there are still 46 teams across the state of Ohio that remain undefeated, three of which are here in the Valley, and two of those are in the same conference. Let's see where they fall in this week's edition of the WKBN Power Rankings. We begin at number 10 with Ursuline. Yes, they've lost two in a row. Yes, they've given up 95 points over the last two weeks, but this team is second right now in computer points in Division IV Region 13. In fact, they'd be top five in any region right now. Those wins over Bishop Hartley, Hickory, Austin Town Fitch, and Warren Harding were huge, and they will most likely carry them to home field advantage in the playoffs. Moving on to number nine, Beaver Local, the first conference champion we've crowned this season. The Beavers have won six in a row and are averaging 41 points per game. That win over Indian Creek last Friday also clinched the first Buckeye 8 conference title in school history. Also new to the power rankings this season, at number eight, Southern Local. The Indians just torched Valley Christian last Saturday and remain undefeated in conference play. In fact, they're winning league games on average by more than 29 points per game. They've got a big matchup coming up with United in week number 10. That will determine the conference champion, but right now, Southern is the highest ranked local team we've got in Division 7. At number seven this week, LeBray. The Vikings are coming off their biggest win of the season. They shut out Brookfield 28 to nothing and improved to seven and one last week. Now they've got a route for Brookfield to beat Garfield to keep their conference title hopes alive. But either way, this team is primed to make a run in the playoffs. Devin Carter is already over 1,000 yards rushing. Aiden Stevens has accounted for 18 touchdowns. They're third in computer points and looked poised for home field in week 11. Moving on to number six, Springfield. The Tigers are coming off back-to-back -back shutouts against Waterloo and Western Reserve. They've outscored their league opponents 251 to 20. They've clinched at least a share of that league title already, and they are now the number one ranked team in Division VI, Region 21. At number five again this week, Hubbard. The Eagles remain perfect through eight weeks of football, and they are winning games in the toughest league in the Valley. I say that because five of the eight in the NE8 would make the playoffs if the season ended today. 
T.C. Caffey continues to dominate. He's now just 20 rushing yards shy of 2,000 for the season. Our number four team this week, Canfield. The Cards cruised past Youngstown East last Friday night, 35-16. to That's six wins in a row, and they will need every one of them. Division Three, Region 9 is very competitive. There are three undefeated teams in that region and five that are state-ranked. At number three, West Branch. The Warriors are 8-0 and averaging just under 50 points per game. Quarterback Drew DeShields has over 2,000 yards passing already this season, and he's accounted for 35 touchdowns. Right now, West Branch is the number one ranked team in Division IV, Region 13. Moving on to number two, South Range. The Raiders scored a season-high 63 points last week against Jefferson. Dylan Dominguez racked up over 250 yards of total offense and scored four touchdowns in that win. Next up for the Raiders, winless Lakeview. And then undefeated Hubbard in Week 10. That will be our WKBN Game of the Week. And finally, our number one ranked team, Farrell. The Steelers are coming off one of the most impressive wins of the season, a 54 to nothing rout of state-ranked Wilmington. Farrell has won five games this year and outscored the competition, get this, 276 to 6, and they have yet to punt the ball. The Steelers are the number one ranked team in the state and the top team in our WKBN Power Rankings. And thanks to Sports Director Ryan Allison, each week throughout the course of the season, our power rankings are available online at WKBN.com and the WKBN mobile app. Here it's 14-0, Austin Town Fitch leading Boardman here in week number nine. And at the root of it all for Fitch is the Falcons quarterback, senior Devin Sherwood, the all-time leading passer. In terms of this Fitch program, we caught up with him. Let's get to know Devin Sherwood. My name is Devin Sherwood, and I play quarterback for Austin Town Fitch. Well, I think this year we have a lot more speed than we ever had before, and uh, we have a re we're a really close team. We did, we did a lot of camps this summer, and we're just a really tight-knit group of kids, and I'm excited to get on the field with everybody. Well, I mean, it's just the best players in the area, and it's a privilege to be in that kind of sense of, like, people who are the best players in the area, and it's just a privilege to be a part of it. My favorite football team is the Green Bay Packers. My favorite athlete is Livy Dunn. Okay. You know that is? No. She's a, what's it called, gymnastics girl for LSU. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? All right, yeah. All right. Ooh, my favorite food, probably sushi. Uh, my pregame pump up song would be Need Help by GMO Stacks. I most admire probably my family, like my mom and my dad. I think they're super good role models for me, and they, they raised me the right way. One thing I'm not good at is tennis, like my friend just killed me in when we played. The best advice I ever gotten was just take everything day by day and just live in the moment, kind of, you know, enjoy every day. Uh, my biggest fear probably would be drowning. I think that's just like, looks just so oh. painful. Oh, awful, yeah. My nickname is D-Swag, and it's because like when I was a little kid, I had like a YouTube channel. I made like gaming videos. So my, my username was D-Swag3, and now people, they call me D-Swag, so yeah. I'm honestly I'm probably looking forward to play playing either Warren or Canfield the most. We never got to play Canfield and Warren, obviously. They beat us last year and ended our season. So I'm looking forward to that game too. One word to describe myself would be leader. I like to set a good example for my peers and kind of pave the way for the other quarterbacks and just the whole team. I celebrate a big play by going to find my center first and then obviously whoever catches the ball or if I run one in, just find my guys and Get it, get excited. The best part about high school football just has to be the atmosphere. Playing in front of people. I mean, last year it got cut short. We couldn't really have a lot of fans, but the atmosphere, I can't wait to get back out there with people in the stands.
Once again, Devin Sherwood has had played a huge part in terms of the success of the Austin Town Fitch Falcons here in the first half. He's thrown a touchdown pass as Fitch leads it 14 0. One of the other most explosive players in the area plays for the Boardman Spartans. His name is Terrence Thomas. He's bound for the Big Ten to play for Purdue. Let's get to know Boardman's Terrence Thomas. I'm Terrence Thomas, and I play quarterback and safety for Boardman High School. Definitely have to say our versatility. We got a bunch of guys that could go out there and play any position on the field. And we got a lot of guys who are hungry and who just want to be out there and be great. So I just feel like that's what separates us from other schools and just uh, our, our grind as well. Like, we got a bunch of guys that grind, so. So it's just, it's really a blessing to be in a position to, you know, say you're in a big 22 contender, so it's really great. Favorite football team? Uh, definitely be the New Orleans Saints. Okay. Yeah, been a big Drew Brees fan. My favorite athlete of all time would probably be Bo Jackson or Deion Sanders. Definitely uh, primetime, though, because primetime, I just watched a documentary, uh, documentary on him last night. You know, just the way he carried himself and just the things he did. Yeah, that's my guy, though. My favorite food would definitely be uh, jerk chicken from uh, Tebow's Caribbean Cuisine. It's really good. It's so good. Favorite movie, definitely will have to say um, Bad Boys. Bad Boys are a Friday, uh, starring like Ice Cube and Chris Tucker. Favorite superhero, I always had like, I always had a thing for the Flash. I always loved the Flash, just because I always like been a fast guy. So then I see Flash, like he's a fast guy. People call me Flash sometimes, so I'm like, okay, it's my guy. Favorite pump up song, definitely be Beat It by Michael Jackson or uh, Kryptonite by Three Doors Down. I've been, I've been like bumping to that a lot lately. I definitely admire my, my older cousin, Courtney Love. Just the way, like I say, he carries himself. Um, he just, he got his education at the University of Kentucky. Now he's just, he's doing big things and I just really look up to him. He's a great, great role model for me. Math. <laughs> I'm not good at math. I needed some, definitely some work in math. Just always work hard. Like, hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. And I always knew I had, like, a, like a God gift talent. But I know that that, will, that won't always be there. So you always got to work hard and just strive for your goals. Heights. And heights and definitely failure. I'm so scared to fail, but I know it's a part of life. But just, I'm just trying to get adapt. I'm trying to adapt to it and just, you know, live with it. Probably like Jennifer Lopez or Shakira. Yeah, young Shakira. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely fits, as always. You know, great competitors. Um, the uh, players on our team, just like us, athletic, versatile, and this should be a really good game this year. So I'm really excited for that. Honestly, just go back to the sideline, celebrate with the teammates. I don't really do too much on the field. Um, you know, I don't want to get penalized or anything, so. Oh, definitely the energy. Um, you know, you got the crowd, uh, your people rooting you on, your teammates, and it's just, it's all love on the field. So I just love the energy out there, and then you just go out there and be yourself. A terrific player and also a terrific personality. Terrence Thomas of Boardman. His Spartans have some work to do in the second half. They trail Austin Town Fitch. 14 0. We'll take a timeout and continue our halftime coverage after this. You're watching live coverage of the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. This halftime report is sponsored by Valley Stem Academy. For the best pizza downtown, visit Avalon Downtown Pizzeria. Dine-in and takeout is available, and delivery is offered for local businesses. Visit our website for new store hours. Call to place your order. Avalon Downtown Pizzeria on Federal Street. 
STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Just because you come to the Valley STEM School does not mean you have to go into the STEM career field. That's the beauty of Valley STEM is that you really get to explore what it is that you want to do here. We get to know their personal interests. We integrate the personal interests into our lessons along with the lab equipment. This school has so much hands-on. It's so much better because I'm getting that help that I need, and I think that kids will have fun here. Attend our open house on November 23rd or call for a private tour today. It's Boscov's grand opening celebration at the Eastwood Mall. See Elvis Aaron Presley Jr. perform daily at 2 and 7 p.m. Adorable playwear and sleepwear from Carter's, Nautica, and more. 50% off. Stay warm and cozy with printed comforters any size $19.99. And free delivery on upholstered furniture $599.99 and up. And join us Saturday, October 16th for autographs and a panel discussion with Ron Jaworski and other football legends at the brand new Boscov's Eastwood Mall. Best wishes to our partner school athletes for a great season from the TCTC. Your option for career and college readiness. Style, selection, savings, Satoli. Score big savings and great service with the team at Satoli Carpet and Floor Covering in downtown Warren. Local obituaries and calling hours from all four counties. You can see them all at myvalleytributes.com. Easy to read easy to search. Get them on your computer or even on your phone. Obituaries and calling hours from all four counties. MyValleyTributes.com For the best pizza downtown, visit Avalon Downtown Pizzeria. Dine-in and take-out is available and delivery is offered for local businesses. Visit our website for new store hours. Call to place your order. Avalon Downtown Pizzeria on Federal Street. And welcome back to Spartan Stadium, Austin Town Fitch 14, Boardman nothing as we welcome you back and continue our halftime coverage. Chad Krasminski with you. Let's now take a look back at last week's Plays of the Week. Here is Sports Team 27's Josh Verkenick. This is the Acura of Boardman and Boardman Mitsubishi Plays of the Week. We kick things off in Levittsburg. LeBray hosting Brookfield. Aiden Stevens rolling out, finds Devin Carter, has the first down, but check out DeAndre Craig. Beat on the play, but gets his hand in to jar the ball loose. Warriors recover. Craig's ball hawking gets number five, but LeBray got the win Friday night. To Reynolds for number four. Raiders hosting Greenville. Trojans on the move. Jalen Ritzer wants it all. Looking end zone and has Levi. Schwartz in the back of the end zone. Toe taps it for the touchdown. Great field awareness from Schwartz gets him number four as Greenville taught Reynolds this weekend. To Hubbard for number three. Eagles hosting Gerard Hubbard on the move. They gave us the TC. Caffey hits the hole hard. Wrapped up at the five, but Caffey keeps the legs moving. Carries several Indians on his back and across the goal line for the touchdown. What strength from Caffey as he powered Hubbard past Gerard and got himself number three. To Lowellville for number two. Rocket hosting McDonald. Louisville on the move. Vinny Malone scrambles far side. Looks end zone and watch Brady Bonofsky right on the sideline. Taps the feet down before getting crushed out of bounds for the touchdown. One more look. Great body control from Bonofsky in midair to get those feet down while falling backwards. Great catch from Bonofsky gets him number two and his Rockets to win Friday night. To our game of the week for number one. Wilmington hosting Farrell. Steelers on the move. Our Chad Krasinski has the call. Turns and gives. This is Stallworth. Breaking tackles, still on his feet, breaks another tackle to the 30, down the sideline, and Stallworth races in, touchdown, what a play. Thanks, Chad, are you serious? From Anthony Stallworth, almost had his jersey ripped off, somehow stays on his feet, takes it 50 yards for the score. Stallworth now with over 4,000 rushing yards for his career, as his monster run helped barrel top Wilmington, as Stallworth gets our top play for week number eight. Here it's 14-0 Fitch leading Boardman. We'll take another timeout. Get you set for the third quarter when we come back at the WKVN High School Football Game of the Week.